Now, as we continue talking about compositing inside of Sony Vegas Pro, I want to talk about the composite modes that are actually available for the tracks inside of Sony Vegas. Now, I'm just going to rearrange my workspace slightly so you can see things a little bit better, I think. There we go. And I'm just going to go to my project files and I'm going to drag this item in. Now, do bear in mind that as I pull this in, it'll fit to fill because if you remember under my options, I went down to my preferences and under editing, I have selected automatically cropped still images added to the timeline. So I'm not going to end up with black bars on either side because I already have that option checked. So I'm going to drop this inside my timeline. There we go. Got the item dropped inside. It doesn't look too sharp because at the moment we're on preview mode, but I can if I want to take that to best mode and full match the nice sharp image if I want to do that. So that's the item brought in. I can zoom in a bit if I want just so that we can see the item. Now, if I want to do a composite, notice immediately I've got this little item here. Now, compositing modes actually work in Sony Vegas with nothing. Usually in most applications, you have to have something to composite with. So you have to have something at the background to composite with to make it work. But Sony Vegas works on the basis of saying that, well, there is something there. There is a black background. And if there is a black background, therefore, a composition mode will work with the black background. So even though there is no other layer in here, I can still use composition modes. But before we do that, I'm just going to bring in an asset from the media generator. So I'm going to click on there and I'm going to go to checkerboard. And at the bottom of the checkerboard, there we go, we've got split screen. I'm going to drop split screen on top and just trim it down to size. And I'm going to leave it as black and white, which is absolutely fine. You can change the colors here. I'm not going to do that because I think this helps explain what's going on. So at the moment, I've got two events. I've got the split screen event at the top and I've got the picture, the still cropped image at the bottom. I can't see either of them because the item on top is always the dominant item. But I do have availability to all sorts of options. For example, I can turn down the opacity of the top item and you can see that as I turn down the opacity, I'm getting quite an interesting effect. The, the white side is lighter, the dark side is somewhat darker as I start to pull it down. So we're getting kind of a, a blend which gets less obvious as I go further down. Okay, so I can blend simply with opacity and you can do the same thing on a track basis. Okay, so you're getting a similar sort of look by turning up and down the opacity of the track. However, composition modes we click on them are a different type of algorithm and it's based on the individual pixel elements that you have in your event now if you think about what white is if you think about rgb white is 255 255 255 those are the rgb the red green blue values whereas black has got an rgb of 0 0 0 so when i add this to the item below 0, 0, 0 plus whatever's below is going to just be whatever is below, whereas 255, 255, 255 plus whatever is below is going to stay at white. It's going to stay exactly as is. So it should get rid of the black but keep the white. So I'm going to click Add, and it does exactly that. It gets rid of the black because it had no value, and it keeps the white, which is at full value. And, of course, you do have the Subtract mode, which effectively subtracts 255, 255, 255 from whatever was below, cutting it out and getting rid of it. So let's just look at a couple of other options. The other one that's quite interesting is when you look at the one that says multiply mask, it actually does exactly the opposite. Okay, it keeps the black, but it gets rid of the white. Now, this is really useful when you're trying to bring in an item that you want to blend. So sometimes people will give you, say, a smoke item. And the smoke item you want to blend has got a white background and grey smoke. But you can actually choose to use multiply to get rid of the white background and keep the grey smoke. Okay, so it's just an option that allows us to blend pixels together. Now, there's a whole bunch of other ones. I'm not going to go through all of them. Cut is just going to cut the whole thing away. Um, but some of the other ones are quite interesting. For instance, difference is really nice. So looking at the difference between the pixel values. Now, obviously, this was black over this side, so that it had no value. There is no difference between nothing, which is what black is, 0, 0, 0, and what's below, whereas white obviously had a different value, and it was looking at the difference between the pixels below and the pixels above, 
and giving us a difference look. And you do have another one below there, which is difference squared, which just gives us a slightly more interesting look. Now, blend modes are often used to get creative looks. So overlays another look and you can choose I know screen which is a sort of a slightly whiter one so sort of like lighten in fact there's three you've got add screen and lighten or lightning modes and then you've got things like darken hard light and multiply are all darkening modes really so you can play with all these different modes and see how they work in your particular project burn is an interesting one some of them are going to be useful others of them are not I really just using this particular version here this this black and white split screen to show you how it works now notice that it is on a track basis it is not on an event basis so if I take that event and I was to bring down say this plied here and drop that down and I'm just gonna leave it as is at the moment you'll see that instantly the composition mode is applied because it is track based it's not event based okay so the item is actually on there but it's quite an interesting look It's quite a dramatic look and of course I can turn down the overall power of that by turning up and down the opacity but the composition mode will make a difference for how much or how little you can see depending on how you change things so these options are available but there is one other option I'm quite keen to show you and I'm just gonna get rid of these two events select them delete and I'm going to bring in um, a turn this back to source alpha which is the default setting and I'm gonna bring in a bit of text so under media generators I've got titles and text I'm just going to drop this sample one on top I'm going to leave it saying sample text okay don't really need to change what it says might want to change its position slightly so in fact if I go here I can very briefly move its location and just pull it down so we can see a little bit better there we go now I can use a composition mode to show either the background image inside the text or the text cut out from the background image so for example if I go to multiply I've got the image inside the text that's great that's one look but if I was to go to the other option which is cut you'll see that the text is cut from the image however this is working because of two items for cutting out like this it's looking at the alpha channel the transparency around the text now when you create text you can see items below it if I take this back to normal you can see things below it because there is transparency around the text the actual letters themselves are opaque you can't see through those because they have a value but around the outside all the other pixels have been mapped to transparent in the alpha channel because channels are red green blue and alpha so it's saying that you can see through these pixels it's transparent so when you choose cut it doesn't matter what color it is it will cut it out however it does matter when you go back to multiply mask at the moment this is working because it's white but if I go back to the actual event and I change the word sample so let's just select sample and change it to a different color in fact it's affecting all the text as you can see you can see it's actually making quite a big difference as to how much I can see and the darker I come the less and less I'm going to be able to see until when I'm at pure black it completely disappears so how bright something is has a direct influence on how well you can actually cut out but it also gives you the option to be able to colorize things now this is all well and good until you think to yourself well what I really want is I want to see this text with this image inside of it but below it I'd like another really interesting picture so let's choose something ridiculous there you go photo 159 drop that below um, but hang on a second I can't see photo 159 it's in the wrong place but if I put photo 159 at the top no that's not going to work because I'll just see that and nothing else how do I have photo 159 showing below my text with the image inside of it well that's where these little buttons come in the up and down arrow this one here is called make composite child and basically what it does is it links two channels together and ignores the others around it so I know it's pointing downwards but actually it's looking at the track above and when I click this one here firstly we get the result we want but if you look down here in the timeline can you see that this is now indented so two is the child of one and those two are kind of like grouped together in their own little group their own little world doing their own little thing ignoring what's going on below them 
If I want to undo it, I can make it again a composite parent, which means it stands alone and it goes back to how it looked before. But to get it back to showing the image below, you actually need to choose make it a composite child of track one. OK, now if I want to swap those round, I can simply move these two items around. And because it is track based, I've now got the image inside of the text and I've got the other image showing underneath. Incidentally, this photo was taken outside of my own house with a camera phone and it has not been modified in any way whatsoever. I've never seen skies like it again since, but that's an original picture taken on the camera phone about five, six years ago. Just mention that in passing. Occasionally the sky does do incredible things. So that's just a basic introduction to composition modes and you'll find that they are very valuable for doing this kind of thing. However, when you start moving into hit film and the opportunities to be able to composite in there, you'll find that you do have much, much greater control and more things that you can do. But the fact that you can do this much inside of Sony Vegas Pro is a testimony to how powerful this piece of software is because it does offer composition. One other thing I really ought to say about this is that you need to remember that this is a track based composition. So all of your events inside any track will have that composition mode attached to them. And this can cause you problems if you put multiple events inside any particular track which has got a composition mode applied to it. So if you do this sort of thing, then I would recommend selecting both the items, right clicking on them and going to group selected tracks. Okay, and then naming them with whatever you want to do. So I can perhaps name that as a, a title group and then possibly even locking the actual events inside of that group so you could right click on them and go to your switches and actually lock the individual events so that they can't actually then be changed later on down the line. So once you've done that then you've actually created a little group and that group can't really be changed or touched. However there is one little other item to show you once you have kind of grouped these items together with a parent child relationship you can if you want apply composition mode that's going to be different again to those two items to the one below. At the moment the item below is completely unaffected, these sit on top of it, but if I want to say do a different square to them, I can actually have a different composition mode applied and make the whole thing look different because I'm applying both of these together looking at the layer below it. So we can look at say difference if we want or we can choose anything else we like. So I could even if, although I wouldn't know why, but I could cut them out be no point in doing that because that's basically what we've already done but you can just say I have a play and see what I can create so just bear in mind that when you have done this it's going to affect anything else you add to those tracks so you don't really want to add any other events to those tracks unless they're going to use exactly the same composite modes Secondly, that you can composite these items as a group so a parent composite mode allows you to composite what you have created as a group and then once they're all grouped and you've locked the events move on and go on to your next item leaving these ones untouched and of course as you know you can even mute those if you want to depending on how things go. My name is Andrew Davis. I hope you found this tutorial useful and thanks for watching.